So the topic of uh, my uh, lecture would be Bangladesh developments in a decade. So by development, I for sure want to uh, mean not only economic growth. Uh, over the last decade, there has been tremendous economic growth in Bangladesh. But uh, if it is not accompanied with other developments, social, political, uh, cultural, etc., etc., so only economic growth uh, doesn't carry uh, any uh, meaning. So we will be uh, talking about uh, development in general. So the 14th century Moroccan traveler, Ibn Batuta, uh, while, visit, while visiting Bangladesh in 1346 AD, described the country as a piece of water-soaked land of immense fertility where most of the people were engaged in agriculture and weaving textiles. So remember in 1346, Ibn Batuta, the Moroccan traveler. Uh, interestingly enough, even seven centuries after Batuta era, the Globe Trotters description remains tremendously relevant to the present context of Bangladesh, which has attained sufficiency in food for its 160 million people and which is also thriving in textile and apparel industry. The achievement of Bangladesh in the last decade is nothing less than miracles and the leadership that worked these miracles is the leadership of Sheikh Hasina, the longest serving Prime Minister of the Government of People's Republic of Bangladesh and the paramount leader of 160 million people of the country. So, uh, that the least developed country has assumed the status of a developing country is nothing but Hasina's contribution to development. Her first term of office as the Premier 1996 to 2001 was a warm-up phase after years of decay and deadlock caused by the assassination of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, on the fateful night of 15 August 1975. It's however faltered as uh, BNP Jamaat Alliance took over and unleashed a reign of corruption, violence, extremism and religious militancy that lasted for the Begum's full tenure, 2001 to 2006. Sheikh Hasina once again appeared as the savior of the country, came up with his party's manifesto, the 23-point charter for change, Vision 2021 and swept to landslide victory in the ninth parliamentary election on 29th December 2008. She took up the reins of office as premier for the second time and made the country rise like a phoenix from the ashes of ruination as she was re-elected as the premier in 2014 and 2018 the development journey keeps continuing against all odds. Kissinger's bottomless basket is now filled to the brim. The present paper showcases the major developments that took place in Bangladesh in the last decades under the dynamic leadership of Sheikh Hasina, who is not only a political leader, but also a social worker. And that's why she has been, uh, you know, hugely relevant to the present seminar session. I would quite cosently include the infrastructure, social, cultural, political, economic, and other developments. Recent statistics of HSBC Global Report say that the economy of Bangladesh is booming. Bangladesh has become the 26th largest economy in the world and will be followed by 
Philippines, Pakistan, Vietnam, and Malaysia. The country has been enlisted into what we now call the next 11. The 11 countries, South Korea, Mexico, Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Nigeria, Pakistan, and the Philippines. And the Philippines, Turkey, and Vietnam, which are ready to become the biggest economics in the 21st century, would, after the BRIC, Brazil, Russia, India, and China countries. As the second largest economic sector in the subcontinent, Bangladesh is moving forward as a member of Commonwealth D8 and Organization for Economic Cooperation, SARC, IMF, World Bank, World Trade Organizations, and Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. It is nothing but Sheikh Hasina's leadership which has helped the country achieve these astonishing feats. She has shown up how we can venture into the Padma Breeze construction all by ourselves, defying the opposition of the big powers. As a matter of fact, Sheikh Hasina has her own independent policy of development and the guts to walk away from those of the Western masters. One of the biggest social developments by Sheikh Hasina and her government is the bold move to bring the war criminals to trial and thereby freeing the country from the long born legacy of impunity. This was a very courageous decision on the part of the government and the trial could be treated on an equal footing with the Nuremberg trials, Tokyo trials and Manila trials. This is a new history in the dispensation of justice in Bangladesh which proves crimes against humanity never go void. Another thing the Hasina government can be credited with is that it is fighting an uphill battle against religious militancy. It is one of the most serious problems besetting the world at the present moment. People are dropping like flies in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq and other places in the world in the hands of the militant forces. Unbridled sectarian violence has turned human habitations into death valleys. Bangladesh too was going to be infected by the militancy virus. Sheikh Hasina's government has taken a tough line on them and her anti-militancy role can provide a model that other Muslims, other Muslim countries can follow. Women empowerment is another remarkable success of Excuse me. Women empowerment is another remarkable success of Sheikh Hasina government. This is for the first time in post-independence Bangladesh that the largest numbers of women have been made to hold high offices. The Nobel laureate Amartya Sen affirms that Bangladesh is ahead of India by many indexes of gender equality and empowerment. The government adopted a national policy on women empowerment and try to bring about a radical change in their social and legal status by implementing it. The other day, the other day, the Nepalese professor of Trivuan University Public Administration Department, Dr. Teknath Dakal, who visited this university the other day, while speaking at a seminar organized by our social science faculty, made a comparative study of the points of transformation from M disease to his disease in both Bangladesh and Nepal and appreciated Bangladesh, Bangladesh's noticeably quickened social and economic growth. Bangladesh under the dynamic leadership of Sheikh Hasina is playing a significant role in regional and global peacekeeping activities. Given its geographical location, it has an added importance in the contemporary geopolitical context. It has immense potential for contributing to Southeast Asian peace process and thereby to the global harmony. The founding father of the nation, Bangabundhu, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman himself was a champion of peace. And 
was awarded the Julio Curi Prize in 1973. Sheikh Hasina, the heir to Bangabandhu's blood and political ideology, too, during her first premiership in 1997, drew up the Chittagong Hill Tracks Peace Accord and put an end to decades long insurgency between the so called Shanti Bahini and government forces. Not only did this historic peace accord help restore national security, it paved the way for regional peace and global harmony. Her government settled the long born land boundary dispute between India and Bangladesh. Not only that, she only on humanitarian grounds gave shelter to hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees fleeing from the persecution in Myanmar, Rakhine state and has been recognized as the mother of humanity. Sheikh Hasina is a visionary leader of 160 million people of Bangladesh. She has explored endless possibilities in her country and its people. She has come to realize that the prime concern of today's world is not the size of the country but its population. The main reason for the development of India and China is their population. She knows it full well. Uh, if we can turn our 160 million people into human resources, we won't have to look back. The chief motto of our development policies is the human resource development. Sheikh Hasina is, by all accounts, the uncrowned queen of developing Bangladesh. Bangabundu gave us independence. Hasina is giving us economic growth and all-out development. Kissinger's bottomless basket is now full to the brim. All our successes are but feeders in Hasina's cap. She is the longest serving Prime Minister in Bangladesh and is still expected by popular demand to serve way longer. The country is thriving under her leadership and her strong leadership is needed to captain her party too. That Hasina wins means all development continues to accelerate uh, and hence Sheikh Hasina's leadership is essential for the country, the region and the globe as well. I am afraid I am already uh, short of time or out of time but uh, actually uh, from my own thinking any development if you cannot add elements of sustainability to any development it will not last longer so uh, to sustain is more important to develop and for sustainability we have to uh, look forward to the goal 17 of sustainable development goals which is partnership alone alone you cannot go much further uh, united you can go much further if you are divided you will fall if you are united you will stand and you will go alone so partnership uh, uh, working together working concertedly these are the most important things in the present context and I uh, would urge upon the people of Bangladesh and of the globe to uh, bury all the hatchets and work under one umbrella. So let us exist and let us coexist. So if you want to exist, you have to coexist and all other things do not matter. Love, affection, fellow feeling and the willingness to work together will be the chief determining factor in the 20th century world. Thank you all. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. Sir has highlighted that Sheikh Hasina is a popular leader and the 
longest serving prime minister in Bangladesh. He has told that tremendous economic growth has taken place during last uh, 10 years, during last decade. And if we look at the developments, there is development in textile, in, uh, in textile industry, there is uh, economic growth, economy of Bangladesh is moving, there is infrastructure development, he has mentioned the Padma Breeze, there is a lot of other issues that fighting against the religious problems, taking care of the anti-militancy issue, trying for the women's empowerment through different government policies, this government is also taking care for regional imbalances and finally this government is trying to restore peace at the national and international level. So thank you sir. You have highlighted the major issues within very short time. I mentioned that you have to complete your lecture within 10 minutes so I think we are um, now going to finish our uh, discussions